Painting with Acrylics with Kim Brandon Watson. I've been creating classes for the Council of Aging Southern California and now I'm offering them to you. I hope you enjoy them and a big shout out to Lindell Stonick, wonderful artist and a great teacher. Artistic expression is a powerful way to cultivate creativity and tell our personal story. Creating art enables us to share our culture and our identity. During these unexpected times, when we are all staying home trying to be healthy and safe, the Council of Aging Southern California is here to provide a comfortable outlet for you to express yourself creatively in the form of art. We believe that art has a significant therapeutic value. It can help us cope with the isolation and social distancing that we are all currently experiencing, as well as help us reduce the stress and anxiety associated with this temporary isolation. Furthermore, this creative process can help us stay busy and motivated throughout the day. Let's get started. Today, we're going to learn about color. It's all about color. Welcome, and thank you for joining me today. I'm Kim Brandon Watson, and um, I'm an artist, and I've actually been painting all my life. Uh, haven't done it full time until the last several years but uh, I went to art school, so I do have some training. And this is uh, the first time I've ever used YouTube Live, so uh, my dog may bark once in a while. Anyway, uh, if you have questions throughout uh, the program, just go to the chat box and um, put your questions in, and I will probably near the end um, stop and answer some of them. Uh, so that's kind of how we're, we're going to try to do it this way, okay? Anyway, so what we're going to do today is we are going to learn about color. It's all about color. Color is, uh, you know, you have such an advantage when you know how to mix colors. And you can mix colors with very few colors and get everything. So your primary colors are yellow, blue, and red. And we're going to mix with these and later uh, add black and white. But with these colors, you can mix every color under the sun. So um, that's what we're gonna start on today. So I'm gonna get my uh, yellow out. Make sure it's your primary yellow and put that out. Put quite a bit because this tends to dry pretty quick and we're gonna be doing a lot of mixing. So we don't want it to, to dry out too much. And you know, it may. By the time I'm done, I don't know, but I'm going to put out quite a bit um, and see if that's going to help me. Now, I have a color wheel here, and I love color wheels, and I think they're great to have on hand um, because they'll remind you of everything we talk about today, uh, probably plus more. So basically, we're going to be working with red blue and yellow, and those are our primary colors. And then we're gonna mix those to get our secondary colors, and then we're gonna mix again for the final set of colors. And then we'll be able to add black and white to all of those. So um, we probably won't go to that extreme on our little uh, chart, but um, that's what we're gonna do. And you have your canvas here. Your canvas, um, which is great, it's, you know, canvas material, but then they put something over it to help the paint um, soak in, and that's gesso. Now, you can get gesso at any store, and um, you can actually put this on cardboard. You can put it on, I've seen it even people put it on, um, like, paper bags uh, and um, thick paper, and it'll 
it'll get pretty firm for you and uh, it'll be a great painting service. So it's an inexpensive way to always be able to make a painting service for your acrylics. It's best with acrylics. Okay, oils too, not for watercolor. Okay, so I have my water, I have my brushes. Now what I'm gonna do is I kind of drew out a little grid here and you don't really have to use a grid if you don't want um, at this point, but um, I just have five boxes across and at least six down. So that's what we're gonna start with. Okay, now I'm gonna need to move my dog over here. This is Bogey. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to set up the camera so you can see it a little bit better. Okay, so now I've got the camera set up. And I just um, got a, actually, this is a piece of watercolor paper that I had um, practiced something on the other side of. So, again, it's, it's pretty firm, which is nice, but. Watercolor paper is going to soak in color more, but um, acrylics are are pretty thick, so I don't think it'll be a problem. But I, I, I don't know if you can see, but I, I put a grid on it. You don't have to be this um, precise, but uh, I just wanted to do it to give me, um, I need a little precision. <laughs> but anyway, uh, okay. Let's see, what brush am I going to use? Okay, so basically, um, I have two things of water here because I like to, um, oh, there's my brush. So when I'm doing color work, I like to have one that's um, real clean and one that I dip in first. And I definitely need paper towel. Okay, and I actually put on a uh, apron because as you know, acrylics, maybe you don't know, but acrylics um, will ruin your clothes. So if you don't wear an apron or whatever, you need to wear something that you don't mind getting paint on. Um, and it's really important that you uh, wash your brushes. Uh, if you don't wash them right after you're done painting, you will end up having um, a brush that you can't use any longer because it's got plastic in it. So it just really is unforgiving. It's very hard to get out of anything. Okay, so now I have my three colors, the yellow, red, and blue. And what I'm gonna do is put down, these are our three primary colors. So, I'm just going to pick a square, and I'm just going to put the yellow down. Oh, you can't really see that, can you? Let me make sure. I think if it's closer to me, you can. Okay. Um, and this is a good opportunity for you to kind of play around with, if you haven't already, if you've never worked with acrylics the thickness, how thick you want to get it compared to how thin, how much water you want to add. You know, some people actually use um, acrylics almost like watercolors where they add it a lot of water and you know, it has, you can get it very transparent if you want. Now for this project, we probably want to keep it a little more um, solid, thicker, uh, just so we can really see the colors. So again, I'm putting down my uh, colors, uh, my primary colors.
if you want, you can just put uh, the paint down, um, just kind of like a little swatch if you want. Okay, and also um, the paint can get down in the barrel here of the brush, so make sure that you are getting all that paint out before you pick your next color. Kind of redoing the chart, and I may have done it inaccurately for what I wanted to display, but it'll work. Just might not be quite. Well, actually, I think it might be okay. We'll see. We'll see as it goes. Okay, so there's my <clears throat> three primary colors. And so now what I'm going to do is mix, I'm going to mix the yellow and the red together. And this is pretty basic, you know, definitely basic, but as we get into the next step of colors, I think you'll see. I'm going to get quite a bit of it because we're going to be using it. You want about 50-50 of each color. <clears throat> so um, just to make that. So we're going to put it right here so we know that yellow and red Also, when you're doing this, if you want to take some time and do the edges, it's just always great practice for when you're doing your next painting. You can turn around to get the edges that you want. Okay, I'm not, still not going to be super precise though. Okay, so now... Um, This brush really holds it in the middle of that brush. So I really need to get it out before I do the next one. Okay, now we're gonna take uh, some red and the blue. And again, about 50-50. Make sure that you're mixing all that color, like this brush loves to capture that color and keep it in the middle. So, um, you might have too much of one color locked into that brush. So make sure that you kind of scrunch it in and, and really um, mix that color well. Okay, so now we've got our violet. Let's see. Trying to go a little fast here. I'm going to not try to be so perfect because I don't want to bore you guys. <laughs> it's going to take a little while. Okay, so um, now I'm actually going to add a yellow square down here just so we can remember that we're actually going to mix the yellow and blue together as well. Blue. 
and mix that. And then I've got green. Again, I'm gonna mix a little bit more of this because we're gonna use it to mix again. So I don't want too, too little where I can't use, use it, I run out. So then we're going to make green. So now these three colors, orange, violet, and green, are made from the primary colors and they're your secondary colors. What we're gonna do, uh, just gonna get my Okay, so now we are going, and you can't see it, what happened? Okay, and now we are going to mix yellow and orange together. So I want part of that orange over here. And I'm going to add yellow. Again, about 50 50. And I'm going to get a yellow orange. Now, I'm going to take the rest of the orange, or at least some of it, and add red to it. And then I should have a red orange. Now I'm going to mix the red and the violet. So I'm going to take some of this violet. And I'm going to add some red to it. And 
And now, I have red, violet. Now this is where my chart got kind of messed up. I see, ooh, because I got Okay, so I need one more spot for the blue. Uh, we're just going to do it this way. So now I want to do blue and violet. See, it worked really well here. Okay, so now we're going to take the blue and we're going to add blue to the violet. Hmm. Well, I'm going to put it right here. So now this is my blue violet. There we go. <clears throat> now we are going to add blue our green. And we should get a blue green. Yeah, I think I probably should have made one more space down and then I could have had the chart make more sense, but it's all going to come out right anyway. And now I'm going to go for the uh, yellow and green. Take some yellow over here, bring over the green. And now we have yellow green. So, now you can start to see how many different colors we're starting to create just from these first three. So these are your primary, these are your secondary, and then this is the next level. Now from there we could even go in and mix these two and these two and keep going. 
So you can see how many different colors you can actually get. Every color that you ever buy, you can mix yourself. Um, so it's always good to know. Then you kind of know how they were mixed, what, you know, that's gonna help you understand what colors are gonna go best with each other. Um, and I just wanna kind of show you on the color wheel here how that turns out. So basically, we have yellow, red, and blue which are primaries. So we took the yellow and the red and we made orange. We took the red and the blue and we made violet. We took the blue and the yellow and we made green. Then what we did is when we took the red and the yellow to make orange, then we took the orange and the yellow to make the yellow orange and then the orange and the red to make the red orange. And then here, we took the red with the violet and made red violet. And then we took the blue and the violet and we made blue violet. And then here we took the green that we made from the, the blue and the yellow. We did blue and green, which gave us the blue green. And then we took the green and the, the yellow and made it into yellow green. So this is all the colors on the color wheel. Now, something else to note, when you get into the violet, everything on this side, two yellow green are cool colors. So they have a little more blue in them, they're a little bit cooler. The yellow to the red violet is warmer colors. So it has more of the reds and oranges in it and they're warmer colors. And this is always good to know. So when you're um, painting shadows and when you're painting um, highlights, it's good to know which are cool and which are warm. Especially if the sunlight's hitting something, you want you want cool or you want warm things, uh, warm colors. And uh, in your shadows, you want more cool colors. Um, the other thing uh, that we're gonna start to do now is add some uh, value. So if you add black, for instance, to the blue-green, if you add white to a green, and this moves around. So this is why it's really handy to have, so you can kind of, um, you know, just refresh your memory on, um, on all of it. Now, there's complica uh, complementary colors as well. So a blue and the orange are on the opposite ends of the um, color wheel. Gonna get that so you can see it. Uh, so these are complements. And if I probably do it around here, it'd probably be better. So red and green, uh, orange and blue. So everything across on the wheel, those are your um, complementary colors. So that's good to know because when you want something to really kind of pop in your painting, especially like if you've got a subject that you're working on and you want to put a background on it, it's always nice to kind of do the contrasting color, um, which is the opposite on the color wheel, at least to some level or have a little bit of it in there. It makes everything else pop. So there's a lot of ways you can use this. There's a lot to color. So. Thank you for participating in the Council on Aging Southern California art class. Also a few questions to ask yourself as you're doing art projects. What were you feeling as you were creating this art piece? What does the color, shape, picture mean to you? What thoughts come to mind as you were creating art?